is AEDT 2150U, Digital Technologies and Advanced Teaching Methods. And this is the third of the three video capsules that we will be used to introduce and discuss history of teaching about, with, and through technology. The concept of collective intelligence goes back to Aristotle in 350 BC, who said, for each individual among many has a share of excellence and practical wisdom, and when they meet together, just as they become in a manner one man who has many feet and hands and senses, so too with regard to their character and thought. In the recent years, many philosophers have contributed to this concept, namely Peter Russell, Tom Ackley, and Pierre Lévy. In this video capsule, we will examine concrete examples of educators teaching through Web 2.0 that both enhances their students' collective intelligence and helps them participate to their collective intelligence. While Web 2.0 users interact with each other, whether through instant messaging or through navigating social networking pages, posting, liking, commenting, and sharing, they gain new knowledge through accessing the group knowledge and receiving and sharing new pieces of information. Let us have a look at the analysis questions. What do Web 2.0 technologies provide teachers with? In blogs, wikis, podcasts, and other powerful web tools for the classrooms, Will Richardson asks, what needs to change about our curriculum when our students have the ability to reach audiences far beyond our classroom walls? What is one possible answer to his question? And what kind of learning activities can be prepared to help students participate to the collective intelligence? How can such activities be beneficial to students? According to Wikipedia, collective intelligence is defined as a shared or group intelligence that emerges from the collaboration of and competition of many individuals and appears in consensus decision-making in bacteria, animals, human, and computer networks. Levy goes further and explains how individuals contribute to collective intelligence. In one of his interviews broadcasted on YouTube, he said that the essence of collective intelligence is the synergy between personal knowledge management and collective knowledge management. One can achieve personal knowledge management by connecting with people and to information sources through the wide variety of media. The individual filters the information, registers or accumulates it in any personal memory system, whether online or on any platform before starting to share it with others. The others are doing the same thing for themselves and their own personal knowledge management. Levy argues that the idea is that you will work for you and at the same time you will be working for the others, sharing with them so others can benefit from what you do and you can benefit from what others are doing. Levy gave the example of our actions on Twitter. According to Levy, when targeting collective intelligence, when we tweet, we enter a URL in addition to a comment about the URL. And according to him, when targeting collective intelligence, this comment should help people categorize the content of the website. Let us examine four examples that revolve around this concept. Roe, a school principal, explained that in his school, students use Wiki to create their e-portfolios and to engage in effective cooperative learning projects. He confirms that it is necessary to integrate the technology that we have been accustomed to in our personal lives into the classroom. Teachers at his school use wikis to share documents with their students and to trigger discussions. Facebook is used to give updates about upcoming tests or events and Twitter is used to post warm-ups and guided conversations regarding the session topic. Rowe explains that although public education has the infrastructure to support the integration of social media, it is the most resistant organization to change. Our second example, Laura Rochette, a secondary level history teacher, implemented the use of blogs in her American history class. She noted that in addition to an overall improvement in quality, 
The use of the blog as an assignment demonstrated synthesis level cognitive activity from her students. In her experience, asking students to conduct their learning in the digital world meant asking students to write, upload images, and articulate the relationships between these images and the broader concept of the course. In turn, demonstrating that they can be thoughtful about the, wor the world around them. Our third example, Jennifer Hunt, an eighth grade language arts teacher of pre-advanced placement student, shares a similar story. She asks students to make personal connections to the text they read, to describe and discuss the issues that were raised in literature selections through social discourse. They engage in the discussion via wikis and other Web 2.0 tools in which they organized, discussed, and then presented their responses to the text and collaborated with others in their classrooms and beyond. Our fourth example, Michael Wesch, an associate, an associate professor of culture anthropology at Kansas State University explained that, the challenge is to create our learning environment to leverage this media environment. We need to think of our learning environment as platforms for participation. And when students see these emerging tools come in, they don't see them simply things to entertain themselves with, which is fine, but they also see them as tools that can help them collaborate better to create something new. We want them to use these media as tools rather than these tools start using them. Welsh uses net vibes to create his class platform of participation, which includes Facebook applications, Google News aggregator, RSS feed coming from his class wiki, Twitter stream where students could tweet to each other, Digo feed to go on the web, tag things and share them with the class, and the video sharing and editing application. Welsh recounts an example of his students collaboration through social media in his class. Once, before the test, he wrote on the class wiki page 40 words the students needed to know for the exam. And little he knew, in 24 hours, the 40 words became 11 pages of information where students expanded on every word, adding pictures, pictures and YouTube videos. Web 2.0 users are accessing, through their interactions with others, their social group's common knowledge learning from it and contributing to its growth. They actively explore, discover, experiment and play with the technology with no fear of consequences. They download media, files, create their own and upload them. They are at the same time savvy consumers, manipulators, authors, producers, fans and also natural critics. The question is now how to effectively and efficiently invest what is happening in Web 2.0 technologies into our educational system. From Skinner's learning machine to ITVs and then to Pepper's logo and reaching all the affordances of the Web 2.0, the control over learning shifted drastically from the teacher as center of knowledge to the learner who can have access to the collective knowledge anywhere and anytime. When asked to describe how naturally learning occurs in Web 2.0, one student said, there are so many interesting things happening on Facebook. You scroll down, you see something interesting, you read about it, and then again, another interesting link, you click on it, and then more interesting facts, also you read them, reflect about them, and comment them. Synthesis questions. Based on the four examples described in this video and on your own experiences, explain how do teachers engage students by using Web 2.0 technologies? What are the differences between students' participation in traditional classrooms and their participation in Web 2.0 courses? What risks do teachers take when engaging in Web 2.0 technologies? And what risks do students face when they are using the Web 2.0 technologies?